hidden off the highway. Kitty corner to a campus crowded with cattle is an arena that's only a secret. If you're not a student at Southern Arkansas. Let's go, guys. This is Story Arena, a new addition to a storied program in College Rodeo. Yes, the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders logo isn't just a dandy drawing, it's a symbol for their sacred sport. How do you find Magnolia, Arkansas? How do you find Southern Arkansas? And what makes you want to come here? The answer? First rate rodeo. Rusty Hayes has led the program since he helped found it in 1981. He's still coaching cowboys and cowgirls to this day, wrangling in rodeo recruits from around the country. I'm from Lebanon, Indiana, Watertown, Tennessee. Dos Palos, California. Yes, California. Yes, sir. And like her teammates, Blaine brought her own horses here. <laughs> yes, sir. To Magnolia, Arkansas. That's, that's the reaction I get a lot. <laughs> Yee We're college athletes just the same as, as a, a football player or basketball player. Except football players don't bring their own helmets. Basketball players don't bring their own basketballs. These guys haul their own horses. <laughs> and their time is totally tied up taking care of them. It keeps you busy. And any athletes had injuries, but not like this. I've had two knee surgeries, a broke ankle, a dislocated shoulder. ACL, MCL, meniscus. I broke vertebrae in my lower back. I had a horse roll over on top of me. Dislocated my kneecap, fractured my tibia and fibula. I mean, I just broke my arm. Rusty's also been through the ringer. Even though I sleep in a recliner every night so I can sleep, I do it all again. Because it's, it's not something you get up dreading every morning. Man, I got to go to work. It's what I get to do today. Ready? There's a love for lassoing, so Rusty remains in rodeo, dedicating his life to this team full of athletes chasing their dreams. That's what you do it for, huh? I don't need to fame the glory. I, I've led a very interesting life. It's time for them. I want them to do it. I would like to go pro. It's about like going to the NFL from playing college football. So if they don't make it, they receive an education, opening doors for other opportunities. Meaning they leave this arena hidden off the highway with more than a degree. I'm going to leave with an education, great memories, great friends, you know, and I've gotten a lot better. That's just some things you can't, you can't replace. It's an early shift for this Texarkana, Texas trooper. Out to tackle the tall task of keeping the public safe and their speed in check. There's no telling how many speedsters he'll stop, nor how many Razorback fans might recognize him for once speeding himself past safeties. You'd be surprised how many people ask me, hey, do you know that guy that played football in Arkansas? And a lot of times, because I know where it's going, a lot of times I'm like, mm, yeah, I know him. Wait a minute, are you him? Yeah. Jones looking. Jones now throwing to the end zone, and it is complete! A yeah! Touchdown! <laughs> touchdown! Oh, my! You can hear it in Paul's voice. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, every year around this time, around that time, I get goosebumps about it. I can't believe it! Victoria 31 Birmingham. yards to Decorey Birmingham in the back of the end zone! It is a name etched in Razorback lore for this play. 2002 at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Hogs down six to LSU. Waning seconds. Matt Jones to DeCorey Birmingham. Hogs to the SEC championship game. I go up and it hits my hands and I fall down and I hear nothing. Arkansas has come from behind to beat LSU. Well, the play. <laughs> no, just kidding. The emotions in that locker room after that game were, were unbelievable. Y'all know that's from the heavens, right? Oh, my. It's over. It's over. You're going to take this with you for the rest of your life, man. The catch, now known as the Miracle on Markham. That name, the Miracle on Markham, you know, it's just, it's, it's one of those things that you, you hear it, especially if you're an Arkansas fan, you hear it, you know what they're talking about. From the high of a miracle, 
DeCorey played for six NFL teams in five years. Touchdown. And one season in Europe. It's a dream that every young football player, you know, strives to achieve. Well, once you make it there and it's like, okay, well, it's not going to work out, then maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. So this father of three turned to a new way to provide for his family. Becoming a state trooper, a Texas state trooper was my passion. Instead of training camp, DeCorey tackled a training academy. I thought, you know, being an athlete, it would be a piece of cake to breeze through this academy as far as the physical part of it. It was an eye opener. They break you down so they can build you up. He earned a new uniform and all that comes with it. It takes a lot to, to, to tell your family, hey, I'm going to work, not knowing that you're, you're going to see him later on that day. Just as he used to be on the field, DeCorey is fearless in the field. After saving a woman from a burning car, the Texas Department of Public Safety named him 2015 State Trooper of the Year. It means a lot, you know, especially being a young trooper. Uh, every day I put this uniform on, I come out here to try to do something positive and make a difference and, and, and do my job as professionally as I can. And at the end of a long shift for this Texarkana trooper, you realize he's still making miracles. It's kind of different. Uh, speeding past safety, you know, at the end result, if you get past them, score a touchdown, that's great for your team. But out here, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're driving a little too fast. You get them. Yeah, yeah, I try. Concealed in a corner of this Conway College is one competitive club. Stacked with several strong swimmers starting their days at 6 a.m. The water energizes me. But sometimes you have to look below the surface to truly appreciate just how strong these swimmers are. I don't know what it's like to have legs. My shoulders do kind of get sore sometimes, but once I'm in the water, I feel free. 16-year-old Julia Gaffney was born without both legs. She has one amputation above the knee, one below. She put on prosthetics when she was six and tried baseball, softball, and gymnastics. No sports stuck like swimming. I can't really run or jump or sometimes it's hard to walk. So in the water, I have more movement. When she freestyles, she's like a fish fearlessly flipping. Let me see your tempo. She feels free because she is free. She has no restrictions racing. When I saw her, I was like, you're amazing. All Coach Tony's taught her is technique. Freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, you name it. That's the most um, amazing thing and uh, inspirational for the other kids because if I don't tell you, hey, Julia doesn't have legs or Julia is a double amputee, you won't tell because she just stays up there with them and race them. And would you believe she's only been swimming for a year? Right away, she just picks up so quick and she's so talented and, and she's so strong. Certainly strong physically, but sometimes you have to see what's below the surface of this competitive club to appreciate just how strong a swimmer is mentally. It's inspirational because uh, you, you see her doing this and you you want to put yourself in her shoes, and I'm like, the, the things that she can accomplish, it tells you that you can do so much more than what you've done. I would just say, you know, if I can do it, anyone else could do it.